Michigan Tech is King Insula. Uh, Tyler is here with his dad, Chad, as they will sing for us. And God rest you, Mary and Jim. Sing along. <laughs>
It doesn't make the world a better place living with Canada, does it? We like these candles because we've seen the light and we believe in peace that light does make a difference in the world among us. We like these candles because we want, want to be the people of the light who know a God who loved the world so much. This God chose to be born in a danger in the midst of dark, darkness. We like these candles as a sign of the light of the world that is coming into the darkness. And we sing with joy.
found a specific way for us to celebrate not only the, the song of the first of all, but the birth announcement. The moment of our rejoicing and, and our happiness and our, our found hope can be here. Uh, John, would you share with us the, the first holy birth announcement that Christ has arrived with the first song? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Savior of this world grow and do and see and be a part. 
part of the Haven of Redeemer song. So now if we could celebrate Mary.
Jesus walks amongst us, Jesus can be traced back so the prophecies will be made true and full, just as God heralded and announced. So with those things being said and the truth set before us, this allows us to see that God's hand was all in leading up to the arrival of Christ in our life. In our world today, could we read together Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25? It reads, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged and betrothed to be married to a man named Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, because Joseph was to be her husband, he was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her and dismiss her quietly. But after he had considered this, he came upon a decision. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream and said, Joseph, son of David, genealogy again, friends. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, no other person. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill the prophecy found in Isaiah chapter 7, when the Lord had said through the prophet these words, The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up from this dream in which the angel appeared to him, he did exactly what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to do, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her, that means he didn't consummate the marriage with her, until she gave birth to the son. And then when he arrived, he named him Jesus, just as the angel had said. Friends, when we come together for Christmas Eve, some of us, it might be our first time, well, praise God that you're celebrating with us today. For a lot of us, and many of us, this is not our first time coming together for Christmas Eve, and there's certain things that we expect. There's a lot of things that we anticipate coming from Scripture. This might not be the first time we've heard the good news, but friends, when we're talking about a journey that Coyle family led us to all these stops along the road in our Advent season, I never really had much experience with the map. I mean, I knew it was in my glove compartment in case I got army sauce on me and I needed to use something to wipe it off in a pinch. But I didn't really know how to use it for directions because it had all these rules to it. I was so blessed and the Lord delivered me from a lot of stress when GPS came on the cell phone. I came right about the time when I got my license and you could get these things and it told me where to go. And I could even pick Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice to tell me his directions, right? They go left off here. You know, it was just it was great. So I make a left up here. Everything worked out until I got to the city where there was more than one lane going this way, and it was rerouting. I could, it wouldn't catch up fast enough to tell me where I had to go. There was a lot of prayers to God and earnest to keep me safe and keep me where I had to go. But you know, one of the things that I thought was, I'll wait for this to refresh. So I had to buy it some time. Sometimes I had to circle around and around. I'd use the Michigan turnaround. Sometimes I even had to pull over and stop altogether to allow the GPS to reroute and find what's going on. Because there were so many decisions that seemed to be made. I just wanted to get from point A to point B. I just wanted to be on my way. I had a plan, I had a deadline. But sometimes I got rerouted. Sometimes there was construction that wasn't publicized. I didn't do the update. Stubbornly, it told me in my email box, son, do the update. It's free. Just click on this. Nope, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Four months later, I still never clicked on that thing. And so now I only have myself to blame because I don't have the updated roadmaps. Friends, all these things to say, Joseph had a plan. He had a route. <coughs> he was betrothed to Mary. The, the dowry had been set. The, the families had agreed upon these things. They were going through the motions of this year-long courtship, and they were finalizing things. And Joseph was probably uh, preparing the, the room, the house, for his family to begin. And then something happened that rerouted Joseph, literally and figuratively. He got some news that all of us would be so excited to hear. Your spouse is pregnant. It's not by you. 
Merry Christmas! See, but it reveals a lot about Joseph. And then I'm sure there are a, a whole bunch of emotions that went with this. But you see, the reason they were such a good match is because Joseph was a righteous man. He was a man that not only obeyed the law, but he knew how to love. He knew who God was. And if we go back to the law specifically itself, we can see in Deuteronomy, he says, listen, if you enter into this covenant of marriage and you have a, a written agreement and someone steps outside the marriage, then you go ahead and put them on trial and they'll be executed for that decision. And it's not quick and easy, it's by stoning. And you get to be part of it. Imagine how many people were frustrated and yet they were able to get out all their anger on those that had stepped outside those things of marital bonds. And they were able to, to throw some stones to the point of death. The law said Joseph could do this. And there was nothing that anybody could say not to do it. So he was owed this through the law. And yet Joseph decided, I'm just going to do this quietly. I'm going to spare her because he was a righteous man. Can we see a little bit of reason now why he was chosen? to name Jesus, why he was chosen to walk beside and protect Mary, a young teenager who, who was carrying the Son of God. The, the messianic prophecies were fulfilled in her. She was walking along her own faith journey. What courage it must have taken to not only say, yes, Lord, I will obey. From Mary's song and scripture, we hear this, but for her to then tell Joseph, who's been kind to her, I'm sure, and going through all of these things to honor her, and she's got this news. So Joseph decides he's going to do this, and an angel comes to him. And I want to dial us back for a moment, friends, because we read about angels a lot in the Old Testament and, and also in the birth narrative, and Mary had an angel that came to her and other things. The angels always say, do not be afraid. And believe it or not, Matthew's gospel account is kind of wordy. It's the longest one. I don't know if you'll draw any parallels, because my name is Matthew, and sometimes I can get wordy. My wife will attest to this. In all Matthew's words, he doesn't say, the angel told Joseph, don't be afraid. But so often the angel would be coming in such majesty that he would have to say, don't be afraid. Listen, I have good news to tell you. Yet in the wordsmith of Matthew, it doesn't say this happened. The angel came right in there and said, Joseph, I know who you are. I know you've been searching after God. I know your righteous heart. I have something to tell you. He didn't bother with do not be afraid because Joseph immediately did what the angel asked when he woke. He took Mary. He protected her and he walked beside her. He didn't consummate the marriage out of reverence for what God had done. He also gave the name Jesus as he was instructed. Friends, Joseph's life was turned upside down. His life, GPS, said, you're going to be rerouted. And it wasn't Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice. It was in a voice of an angel, right? The will of God brought upon him to say, I know you have a plan. I know you have some dreams for yourself. But God broke through the plan of man, of humankind. He said, I have something better for you. Friends, would you agree that even though it seemed like an interruption in Joseph's life, we're coming together honoring Joseph tonight as part of God's great story of deliverance for us. Of the one that God chose to protect, to mold and shape Jesus' upbringing. To provide for him the unconditional presence of love of God was left in the hands of Joseph. Would you agree even though it was difficult? There's probably a lot of questions and uncertainty. That Joseph had to decide that God's will was more important than his dreams. Yet wouldn't you agree that while the situation might not be ideal in our minds, Jesus was re or Joseph was rerouted to a better life. A righteous plan. Friends, we might have a plan 
for how this Christmas is going to go. We might have a plan for what we want to do in 2020. We might have some things on the calendar that we're looking forward to. We might have a, a specific anniversary or birthday or vacation, things that we have put all our chips on. Maybe it's a non-refundable special that we put on that we are getting away for spring break this year. But friends, as best as we plan, I want to ask you, do you trust that if God comes through and disrupts your plans, would you honor Him in saying yes? Would you be willing to be shaped and molded and transformed and used by God? Because He may be ushering in a saving grace for someone in your life. Would you be willing, as the old hymn says, to trust and obey when God says, I have something else for you? If you were here with us on Sunday, we talked about John 3.16 that reminds us that Jesus came not to judge us. And also 17. He didn't come to judge us, he came to save us. From the very onset, from the first cry outside his mother Mary's womb, Jesus arrived to save us. Not because we could save ourselves, but to transform us to receive his grace, to be new people. Oftentimes in the New Testament, Jesus wouldn't even give new names to have us mark in that moment that we are no longer known as this name, but we have been born again, so now we are known as this name. Friends, if our names change, that's a significant deal. That's a big deal. I've noticed that a lot of times with, with, with ladies, they will take a, a gentleman's name in marriage, but on their Facebook, they have to put in parentheses what their old name used to be so people can find them. Even though things have changed, some people still know them as their old name. Imagine how radical it would be if our names were changed because of our faith in Jesus. So we always had a story. If people lost track of us, then we would have to go find them. Or they would engage with us again and say, uh-uh. We might have played football together, but you don't know me because I have a new name. I am born again in Christ. Everything has changed. <coughs> Friends, we may have traditions to make. We may have plans. We may have things that we always do that we love. And, and I appreciate that because those are things that help tell our story and help celebrate the love we have for one another. And yet the familiar paths and the familiar things... I heard a story a while back that there was a grandfather who was always the one who would wear the hat, the special silly hat, and he would pass out the presents on Christmas Eve. Well, one day, one of his grandkids, about eight years old, old enough to ask some questions, right, but, but not too old to, to uh, not make sense of things, his eight-year-old grandson says, hey, can I... Can I help you pass out the gifts? Well, everyone kind of waited in a moment because they were waiting for how granddad was going to gently let the little boy down because this was grandpa's job. But grandpa looked into his grandson's eyes and all he saw was he didn't want to take his place. He wanted to help. He wanted to be part of the joy that everybody got about getting these presents. That eight-year-old boy had grown into be a man who's my football coach. And he said, if my granddad never would have let me help with the presents, when Grandpa passed away, I'm not sure if he would know what to do on Christmas Eve after church. But I knew where the hat was, because he let me wear it sometimes. And I knew the order that we do things, and how we light the candles. I knew everything about our traditions, because Grandpa let me help and eventually one day, he sort of took his place. Now you can imagine, this probably wasn't the kind of pep talk right before our city rivals on homecoming night that you would expect. It didn't happen there. It didn't happen in the locker room at all. It happened in the weight room when we were having a relationship together. Because my football coach that I trusted so much told me about some bigger things in life. Said that if you have an elder states person in your family traditions, 
would ask you to help them and spend a little time with them, ask them some questions. Because we might have plans that three years from now they will still be at the table. Sometimes those plans change. If we have Christmas this year, let's make sure that nothing goes unsaid. Let's make sure that we tell those that we love, we love them. Or we don't sit in awkward silence and just say, I'm sorry. Can I sit next to you? Would you like to split the last piece of cheesecake? Because that's precious to me. <laughs> Friends, we are going to move on to the service in a minute. And I know tonight might be hard for some of us. Because we have sang hallelujah. We have celebrated the journey of peace, love, joy, and hope. We have lit the Christ candle of knowing that Jesus came to give us new everlasting life. But friends, our tissues that were dry that are dampened now by the tears that fall from our eyes sometimes make it hard for us to say, I am looking forward to celebrating Christmas Eve and Christmas Day that we might have to compose ourselves before we walk into the party with all the lights and the noise and the cheese ball. Friends, I just want you to think today that everyone is walking some sort of mile in this faith journey. And I want us to remember that Jesus meets us where we are. If during silent night, you thank God that the lights are closed because I'm singing Silent Night for the first time without someone I love next to me holding my hand. Maybe I look over and it's uh, not the same person that I light the candle with. Maybe there's an empty chair at the, at the table and maybe even I already have a gift because I bought months ago and it's sitting in the closet and it hurts. <coughs> Jesus came so that while we feel that pain because we hurt because those that we love that we have a journey with that touched our lives and we touched theirs that we might have to wait for a reunion on the other side of heaven and so it hurts right now and I swallow and it hurts it's dry but Jesus says I came so that this isn't the final answer so that one day we will sit together at a banquet table, that food will never run out, you won't have to share, that the limitations of this life will no longer be yours, you'll be able to walk unassisted, you'll remember every single part of our lives because age and illness won't steal those things away. There will be nothing but joy, peace, hope, and love in the realm of glory. And that's where the angels come and say, Joseph, would you play a role in this great story that God is telling? And when God interrupts our plans, he's saying, Matt, I want you to participate in the story I'm telling. Would you trust me to reroute you, friends? This Christmas, would we not only sing the songs in honor of what Jesus has done, but the work that Jesus is still doing in our lives? As we wait for him to come again and say, yes, I have gone ahead and prepared a place for you. And I will take you with me. Friends, I'm going to ask uh, Courtney Hansen to come up and sing a song called I Believe for Us. And as she finds her way up here, I want you to take a moment to... To know that we will be taking in an offering today because the great providers provide for us. And we give because it's a way of saying thank you for that provision and trusting that God will provide for our needs again. But uh, Courtney, I'm... Oh, there you are. She's kind of quiet there, huh? She's kind of sneaky on me there. So it's good. Courtney, you're going to share a song with us that reminds us of our belief, of our faith. And it's not because just our parents or our Sunday school teachers taught us, it's because we've discovered them in the Word of God. Would you please lead us in this time of offering?
please be careful to light their candle if you would um, as we move on there. And by the time we get to towards the end, we're all singing with the lights and the candles. And we look around and we can see that there are many voices. In the quiet and stillness of night, as most of our songs remind us, that there is a light that shines in the midst of our darkness. It's a light that will never be extinguished, and it will always lead our way. If we focus on how vast the darkness is, we're missing it. We're focusing on the light that is right in front of us, that's intimately in our hands. And that remind us that not only had the world seen a great light, we too have seen a great light that is intimately in our space and will light our way as we join our voices together in this hymn. Before we begin, would you please join me for a moment of prayer because when Silent Night is finished, we'll usually extinguish our candles and we'll be dismissed. So when we're finished with that, it will just be kind of a, a soft dismissal and, and please leave as you're, you're called in that place. Would you please join me for a moment of prayer and benediction? as we prepare soon to sing Silent Night together. Almighty God, tonight we came expecting. Whether we were hurried and didn't know if we were going to make it on time, or whether we planned all day for today's gathering today at 4 o'clock, you met us here. You were amongst all of our gathering. You were with our neighbors. And Lord, you are preparing us still for this final time that we will gather together before we sing. And Lord, we thank you for all the voices that are here today, the little ones that are making their presence known. Lord, we thank you. It's not noise, it's music to our ears because we know that they're sitting right next to their parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, that you don't care what our age is or what we look like, that you have come and you were born and you died to save us all. Lord, thank you for calling us one and all of all walks of life in this place. Lord, bless us and keep us. Whether we've been here for a long time and we can't remember how many years it's been since we came together for Christmas Eve, Lord, walk with us. If we're limping today, Lord, would you let us lean on you as you walk beside us, not going too fast, but trying to keep up with us. Lord, if the tears fall from our eyes, would you wipe them from there as you continue to call us, son or daughter, walk with me and follow me. Lord, if this is our first time coming together in faith on Christmas Eve and celebrating these great miraculous truths, and we might not understand it all yet, will Lord fall upon us that we don't have to get everything to know that there is might, majesty, and mystery in the way you work. Lord, would you hear the words we are about to sing? As Courtney reminded us of all the truths we believe. We come together as people who want to encounter you, Lord, who have waited for you. We want you to mess with us a little bit. We want to invite you into our lives. We want to be changed. We want to be renewed. We want to be resuscitated. And Lord, as long as we have breath this side of heaven, we know that you are not done with us yet. Lord, Breathe in us a spirit of revitalization and renewal as we prepare to close this service today, Lord. Journey with us and call us to your plans. In Jesus' miraculous and holy name. Amen. Friends, could we please stand and sing this song together of our Father?
service, everyone.